I want to thank all of you for coming to my, one of my installations. Uh, I will show you, sh shortly show you a uh, span of my work through the years. I've been an artist since 1970 or even before. I was, I was born an artist, but I became a professional artist around 1970 when I, was, I began working at J. Walter Thompson Company as a junior art director. And then later on, I started studying uh, my bachelor at the School of Visual Arts in 19, from 1972 to 1976. And then I became uh, a student uh, at the New York University. I did my master there in 1977. And I want to show you some of my installations through the years. This was the show at, at Joseph of Mitan Gallery, 1976. And uh, I had this show based on the circle. Everything was circular in the show. Uh, I met David Hammond, Charles Abramson in that uh, gallery. And we continue our collaboration through the years. Uh, maybe we worked together for maybe five to six years after meeting them at just above Midtown Gallery. Circle with four corners, part of that same show. You may call, you may say, well, circle with four corners. Well, if you count one, two, three, and four, then you have a circle with four corners. It's, I started as a minimalist artist, and then later on I became a an artist using minimalism and mixing, mixing the, the style with the figurative abstraction. I think it was more open for my, the, the concept uh, was more open for me to work with than minimalism. Be, minimalism became kind of boring after a while. And, I, I, and then I started mixing other uh, concepts with the uh, minimalistic qualities of my work. This series was done uh, in Venice, 1977, 22 paintings based on the architecture and the environment in Venice. Uh, so these are abstractions of the things that I saw while I was in Venice. I was living there. Venice, the Grand Canal, and the Art Rialto Bridge. You see some of the elements of the architecture, uh, architecture. Then you will see some of that influencing my work. Like you see the entrances, the circle, the, the arches, the little bridges. These are the streets of Venice. Venice has no cars, so they are, everything is in boats. There are boats for everything. There are boats, uh, funeral boats, taxi, everything is in a boat. So these are some of the different paintings. So you can see, for example, here the little islands in Venice, the, the water surrounding the islands, the Grand Canal, all that is reflected on this drawing, but using abstraction as a mean of expression. Uh, then, uh, after I came back from Venice, I, I continued my collaboration with David Hammonds, Charles Abramson, and this was at the Studio Museum in Harlem, uh, when, when we were artists in residence there at that time. I created an abstraction of this picture to portray the space of the gallery of the, of the museum, the studio museum in Harlem, uh, in Harlem. And you can see the sculpture with three balls, three artists, for example, David, me, and Charles Abramson in a container. You can see the sculpture right there, you see? So you can see the, minim the minimalistic qualities in my work during this period but I began using found objects. I found this pipe, and I cut it, and I cast plaster balls in containers, and I put them in, within, the sculpt, within the sculpture. 
And this is one of some, the smallest sculptures that I had done. There's another one that I did recently that is even smaller than this one. You will see it later. And these are the installations that we created at the Studio Museum. Charles Abramson, David Hammonds, and myself. 19, uh, 1981. They were reviewed by major newspapers at the time, Soho News, New York Times, Village Voice. All those were reviews. And all this installation was created out of found materials in Harlem. For example, they closed a mosaic company, tires. We collected the tires and we did the floors of the installation. Uh, feathers. Uh, we all worked together, the three of us. We borrowed all photographs from the three shops around 125th Street, and we put them on the walls. Here's another view. So we have three artists, one, two, three, and we mix everything together. We even cover the furniture with mosaics. And the walls, everything was part of the installation. This installation took three, three, three different rooms, so I'm only showing you two rooms of the whole show. This is the, the top where the art space was, and this is my installation there above the galleries. Uh, everything I used, the old circle, you remember the f circle with four corners? I used it on this rooster fight, so cock fighting. And this is the space here of Charles Abramson on this side. On the other side was David Hammonds. This is uh, after I finished as an artist in residence at the Studio Museum in Harlem. I, David Hammonds created an exhibition called Art Across the Park. And I did this, I did this piece for the Central Park. And you can see the lawn on the back and the pond one of the upper sides of uh, uh, Central Park. The installation was called Loops, a series of loops that went in and out of the ground. And this, then after that, I got the commission for the Percent for Art Program Growth, the first Percent for Art Commission. And here I am designing the Marquette, I look different, I was younger, no? <laughs> and here are some of the drawings that I did for that piece. This is the Marquette, the original Marquette that was very small, and that was, this Marquette was presented uh, at City Hall, the Rotonda office of City Hall, uh, with the representative for the government. They approved the display. And in 1910, in 2010, they restored the piece for the first time. 20 years later, 25 years later. So the piece was kind of abandoned for a while, and then they did the restoration in 2010. The piece, we can see the act of fighting, as a, the rooster fighting around the piece. It, I created this chalice, like a chalice or a cup. Uh, representing the tragedy. As you turn around the sculpture, you can actually see the roosters fighting. It's a kinetic illusion that I created in the piece. They were celebrating, and so you can see the transparency. Ag again, I create an illusion. When you turn around the piece, you can actually see the roosters fighting with the piece. After that, or during that same time, 1985, I did this other installation, and that's where you have the catalog right here. This is this installation, 1985. So Gross and Orisha Santo, the artistic interpretation of the Seven African Powers, they both became 10 years a celebration this year. They were both were created around the same period. And here is an anthropological investigation that I did abo about an Af Afro-American religion called Santeria, Lukumi. And I'm not a member of the religion, but I like to do investigations. And with the investigation, I create pieces. And this is the piece that I created 
I invited uh, Charles Abramson to collaborate with me on this installation. Also, I invited uh, 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 Susana Torreya Levar to write about it. Uh, she was the curator of the Museum of Hispanic American Art in New York at the time. I invited Robert Faris Thompson, the scholar, to uh, write an essay for the exhibition. Also, I invited Charles Abramson to collaborate with me in the installation. Charles Abramson, well, this is a digital uh, representation that I did, that I used in the cover. Okay, I did this in collaboration with my nephew. Uh, we did this together. And the icon was drawn by me, but the installation, the, uh, the digital installation I created with my nephew for the cover of the catalog. Some of the icons that were represented, El Egua, uh, one of the saints of the installation, Santos, or the or saints of the religion, or Santos of the religion. I combined two different disciplines the Afro-American discipline with santo making and all that, but also the tradition of santo making, Puerto Rican tradition of santo making in this intellectual. Instead of wood, I use metal. That's the only difference. And I wanted to make them as Catholic as possible <laughs> because the other part, the other side of the installation was African. So you can see the environment was African but the icon was Catholic, mm -hmm. because it's a mixture of both traditions, the Catholic tradition and the African tradition, African Yoruba tradition. These are the different deities of saints. Ogun, Ele, uh, this one is uh, Orunla, Yemaya, Oshun, and the Christ. I satisfied myself also. I was, I was was curious as an artist what was like to create a Christ, create a saint. For example, like Michelangelo creating a saint or uh, Murillo creating a saint. What was the feeling of that? How the artist felt at that time? while making these images. Because in our society, that's not allowed from the artist. When an artist creates saints, it's just, you know, so it's, it's out of the realm of being a modern artist. It's no longer allowed. Because uh, uh, in the old times, the church was the one that commissioned artists to create different uh, installations or images of saints. But as a modern artist, I wanted to have the experience of doing that not only to create a saint, or, but to also be uh, continue with the tradition of santo making, Puerto Rican santo making tradition, sculpting it, them out of, at that time out of wood, but this time I used metal. So I, I wanted to combine all this, uh, the history of all these disciplines in this installation. This jumps around. This was the environment of the installation. So we went around Soho because the installation took uh, part in Soho. At that time, the museum was in Soho. The director of the museum was Nilda Peraza, and Susana Torroya Leval became the curator of the museum, the first curator of the museum. So I had all kinds of stuff that we found around uh, Soho. Also, uh, Charles Abrams had a large collection of African objects that were used in the collection. Even live fishes. I had a pond with live fishes in there, symbolizing Jemaya, the goddess of the sea. Goddess of the river, goddess of the sea. Two different icons of the religion. And tragically, after we created that installation, Charles Everson passed. So uh, they asked me to continue my collaboration with him using his work. 
So I used Charles Saberson's work to create installation uh, in San Francisco, at the Studio Museum in Harlem, at Snow Harbor. I began collaborating with him, but in spirit. And I did all these installations of using his work. This one was the one in San Francisco. It's a giant mosaic of paper. So he used to paint on paper and create different abstractions in paper. Uh, so I used his work to do this installation. And the candles at that time represented the years, how old he was. So I had uh, the number of candles at that time, I don't remember, was the, the, the years that he lived. Sometimes I use the same uh, names for different things. There is a print, an etching, and here is a sculpture. But what interest, interested me of all this was the, the architecture of Palenque. The, comb, the roof comb of the buildings that they used to predict the passing of the day according to the shadows that the sunlight casted on the different elements of the building. Bird House, inspired by a place in San Juan Puerto Rico, it's called uh, El Parque de las Palomas, or the Pigeons, Pigeons Park in the old San Juan. Also, another source of inspiration was Pablo Neruda's Mistreated Bird, the poem of Pablo Neruda, Mistreated Birds. Here, this sculpture is called Rio Grande de Loisa, Loisa's Big River, inspired by a poem, poem by Julio de, Julia de Burgos. She died here in New York uh, many years ago. And I wanted to create a a piece using her poem. This piece was supposed to be shown here at the courthouse of this building, but it was not approved, so we couldn't show it. So you won't be able to see this, this piece today. During the same period, from 1980 to 1984, I created a series of vanities inspired by the legend of Narcissus. And this one is called Metamorphosis. Uh, there are four of them, four vanities. But as I said before, this one is one of them, and it's called Metamorphosis. Then after that, after that 1970, 1993, I created a monument to the 500 years of the cultural reversal of America. And this is the most complex piece that I have ever done. You see, it on, I mean, that's just a print on the wall, but that's the print that inspired the deck of the boat. You see the deck of the boat using, I counted the other day that I have about 150 slaves on the deck of the boat. You have the, this, the helm of the boat here with an astrolope. You see the astrolope in the center? That's an instrument that the medieval navigators used to use to travel uh, by the sea, in the sea, uh, looking at the stars with the astrolope. And they were able to measure the stars and determine the positions that they were navigating at the particular time. And it's a very complex piece because I had to invent the whole mechanism under the boat and on top of the boat to, to be able to move the, the globe with the helm of the, of the, of the, of the galleon. So everything is balanced on one spot. So although the, the installation was so big, you, could, you was able to turn it 360 degrees with one hand, you can rotate the boat 360 degrees. And with the helm of the boat, also you was able to turn the globe at the same time. So if you was navigating, because I was turning you into a navigator, you was able to determine the country you, was, you wanted to go to 
turn the globe to the particular country that you wanted to go, and then go there, imagining that you was going there. So you was able to participate within the structure. It's an interactive piece. Everything comes apart. You can put it together, and it comes apart. Uh, the boat is now in my studio. It's been there for several years already. Because this piece traveled to four different locations. Every time that I had to move the piece, I had to dismantle it and put it all together again uh, on the particular side. So not only you have the boat, but you have projections happening on the, on the sails of the boat. And I use different elements that I have of different installations also. For example, this installation right now is an East Island Art Park. The mystery, uh, the, the oracle of the past, present, and future. So around that time, I already had created that piece. But now I had to do a new rendition at Tompkins Square Park because I had to redesign the whole platform uh, of the piece to be able to show it at, the, at Tompkins Square Park. And you have the, the etchings here, you see, part of the installation. That's the diagram for the boat, the galleon. The diagram for this. And there you have the piece that inspired the, the oracle of the past, present, and future. But they are just, it's just an etching. Then I had to transfer it and convert the whole thing into a sculpture, environmental sculpture. And here you have the reverse print of America. 500 years of the cultural reversal of America. The print was printed in reverse to reinforce the title of the piece. So here you have a pre-Columbian and post-colonial history of America. Elements, not everything is there because it's impossible. I didn't have the space, but some important elements of the colonization and post-colonization of America. He said the one in Pennsylvania. The one before was at Kingsborough College. And this one here is the first one, Pennsylvania, Allenton, Pennsylvania. And you can see that the whole piece is suspended in the center here. Although the piece was nine feet high by 25 feet long by eight feet wide, no, 10 feet wide, you was able to rotate the whole structure 360 degrees. And when you touch the sculpture, you had the feeling that the galleon was uh, traveling in water. You can move it with one hand because it was all balanced. So all that was part of the installation. Also, within the gallery, I had the sound of the sea, an installation of the sounds of the sea. And the feathers symbolize uh, non-Western cultures like African culture, pre-Columbian culture. They use a lot of feathers in, in their work. So I wanted to portray that part of the pre-Columbian and African civilization in the piece. This piece is a very complex piece. I've been, I've been working on this drawing for many years. The drawing took me a year to create. I wanted to use the Puerto Rican star you know, the Puerto Rican flag on the star of Puerto Rico, but use it for some other things. In this case, I wanted to go into classicism, explore the legends of the atlas. So I composed this drawing to create the globe of the atlas, the, the universe of the atlas. There are six plates, six, six plates combined together, bolted together to create the orb of the universe. So this is only one of the drawings. And each drawing has 52 stars. In the globe of the, of the universe, you can see, you can, we, I have 312 stars. There it is, from the drawing to the globe. 
Remember that this globe is, was created using six different plates of stars using this drawing. So I asked the, the factory to cut. I did the drawing. I sent it to a factory to cut it. The same factory that created growth. They created uh, the, the cut the metal using laser machines. And then I took them to my studio and bent them and weld them together to create the universe. This is the universe of the third millennium. It's, this is the title. The, the title is The Atlas of the Third Millennium. And this is the drawing that was used on the, this. I, I will show you the monument now. See? So the monument is roughly about nine feet, but this is supposed to go on a seven feet column. I may be able to do it next year. I may be able to install it uh, in one of the New York City parks next year. I'm not sure. I'm not sure because the work is really complex to put it all together again. So this is, I just did this for the gallery when we were showing this gallery. It was a faculty show at Kingsborough College. So the piece has only been shown once at that gallery. In the next installation, I'm planning to create a column seven feet high and install the atlas on top of that column. I'm using the same formula now to create another piece that I don't want to talk about it yet, but I'm using copper plates this time. And I etch on the copper the formula, the drawing formula that I showed you at the beginning of the Italian, I mean, uh, the Atlas piece. I'm using the same drawing to create this piece, using copper this time. Again, uh, this, using again abstraction, I created this vanity that's supposed to portray uh, Leonardo's, uh, because it's a, a Leon, this, this part is a, I did this piece using one of Leonardo da Vinci's drawing, and I transferred it to wood, and I carved the whole thing together and put the whole thing together. It's called Leonardo's Vanities. It's an installation. When you open this door or the, on the piece, uh, in there I have many drawings of Leonardo da Vinci and the pieces related to his life. At the time, Leonardo was studying Islamic art. And I was very inspired by this drawing, and I created this piece. It's called Leonardo's drawing and also you know that Leonardo's draw, Leonardo used to write in reverse and to be able to see his work you had to uh, uh, show it on a mirror and then in the reflection this way you was able to read Leonardo's drawing by re reflecting it on a mirror so that's why I have the mirror there also you see there's a mirror there so all these concepts I miss into my work uh, this one is, it was created, this eagle was created for another installation that I did in Isalenga Park, I mean, not in Isalenga Park, in Central Park called Noah's Ark. Noah's Art. And was supposed to represent different endangered species. In this sculpture, I used the bald eagle because at that time, the body was in danger as a species. And it's no longer that way, but at that time it was in danger. So also the ego comes apart also. It's now part of the collection at Kingsborough College, of King, Kingsborough College in Brooklyn. Detail. After that, I, have another, I had another commission for the Department of, of Education in New York. This is the Tree of Knowledge, PS 128 in Manhattan. So I did this tree 
to represent the tree of knowledge. It was the entrance to the amphitheater of the school in here. And this is the lobby, the entrance lobby of the school. It's another angle here. And you have an inner courtyard here. So you enter the school this way, and then you, are, you, you see the tree of knowledge, and then you continue, and you can go into the courtyard, or you could go into the rest of the school. Hmm? You can't miss it. You can miss it. It's 10 feet by 10 feet, the installation. This one I did in Pilsen when I was, uh, I got the uh, Lila Wallace Foundation grant, and then later on I, I got another grant called the Arts Link uh, uh, Commission. And the Arts Link Commission was to collaborate with another artist, Czech artist. So I went to the Czech Republic, stayed there for a few months, and I collaborated with different artists there, especially Pavel Opochensky, <coughs> one of the artists. That later on you will see some of his work here. So this is the mobile that I created for the Skoda Foundation. When I was there during the Art Link, Link uh, residency, another foundation uh, became interested in my work, the Skoda Foundation. And they allowed me to work in a factory for many months, and I created this mobile in that factory. And again, I've been using stars in my work for many years, so you, you can see stars here also. One of the fountains in the garden of the Corsair Castle, where I was uh, residing in, I call this piece the healing. It was a, 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 an abandoned fountain there. And some of the pieces of the fountain have broken off the figure, the central figure. Some of them, because the sculpture was so old, maybe from the 15th century, some of the the legs have fallen off, the arms have fallen off. So I decided to heal it. <laughs> and I went to the center <laughs> and applied some of my healing power here with cotton balls, you see? <laughs> so it's called the healing. Another installation within one of the pavilion of the, of the Corsair Castle in the Czech Republic, the entrance to a fallopian tube. And this piece is related to a book that I have there in, in that window that is called The Biography of the Spermatozoid, of a, an Spermatozoid. You can check it out later. So here is the entrance of the fallopian tube based and inspired by creation. Within the fallopian tubes. So I use the lights of the a hallway or the stairs light, I transform them into eggs. And then here you have the spermatozoid trying to uh, get together with the egg, <laughs> conceive the egg or whatever. The whole act of, of, uh, of creation is in that installation. Sometimes I use a lot of humor in my work also. This is a, a piece using humor. Another piece in the co in Corsair Castle, this is one of the pavilions here, you see? You can see Angel's Gate here, but you, you haven't gotten to that piece, but there's another piece called Angel's Gate here, you see? I will show it to you later. But here you have encounters. And this is the col collaboration that I did with Pavel Opochensky, one of them. Pavel Opochenki did the center, the stonework. I did the figures and the wire and installed the whole thing together. It's called Encounters. Angel's Gate, you saw it here. See? That's the church in, of the castle. They were celebrating a lot of weddings there, and they used to stand here, take you know, take pictures of themselves, the bride and the groom uh, usually stand there, it used to stand there and, and celeb celebration of the world and taking a lot of photographs and everything. The doors uh, were part of the castle. They were all doors from the castle. They were about to dispose of them. They were about to throw them out. 
and I asked them to install them in, in the middle of the gardens, and I brought the feathers from New York, and I put the whole thing together. It's called Angel's Gate. Using, again, found material. Remember, the sculpture with three balls, I used found materials. In, this, in the installation of uh, the Studio Museum in Harlem, I used a lot of found materials with David Hammond and Charles Evanson. So I'm continuing that tradition. This is another piece that I did with Pavel Opochensky. The center is stone work of Pavel Opochensky. I did the feather work around the sculpture and the labyrinth on the floor. This is the Manes Gallery. Manes Gallery was constructed on top of, of the main river of the Prague Main River. I, I think it's called the Varto River. So you can see the river here, the bed of the river. I will show you in the others. See the river? This is the Prague Opera House back here. And this is the installation uh, in Manes Gallery of, of the work. Again, the feathers were brought by me uh, from New York, and the pigmen I found in the Czech Republic also. The red pigmen took about two weeks to do this installation. It's called Paven, Pavel, Opochensky, Pavel Opochensky as a minotaur, because he used to be, you know, hanging around with young girls and enchant them and run away with them. So he, that was his personality. And I wanted to capture the, his personality in this piece. So he's like the centaur that used to abuse ladies around or uh, enchant the ladies. And so it's reflected on this, on this piece the whole behavior of Pavel Opochensky. Then I did in uh, El Arsenal in Puerto Rico, there's a building, a colonial building called El Arsenal that, you know, that's, it's in the center in the, in the, in, in the old San Juan. And I did this installation there called in, uh, between Alpha and Omega. And this was uh, the result of a childhood experience that I had. I had an asthma attack. Um, when I, I passed out, and in the middle of that, I saw, I thought I was dying. You know, I, I saw like the toner, toner uh, vision of when people die, some of them claim that they see a toner full of light. So I wanted to capture that moment. On one side, you see Omega, no, Alpha, the beginning, symbolized my childhood. And Omega, the end. And in the end, here you see the baby, baby Jesus, you know, or any baby in the installation. And on the other side, you see a man that has lived all his life. And he, he has turned into a very complex individual. So that's portrayed by the use of a puzzle view of his body. And you can see the Christ that I showed you before, and the saint, you remember the Santo Show? I had the Christ, and on the other side I have Omega. Um, Alpha, I'm sorry, this is Alpha, the beginning. We're an offering of infinity, because everybody, you know, when they are born, they, you think you're going to live forever when you are a child. But then, on the other side, you have Omega, the end. And you can see a person dying or already dead, and the, his complex personality is reflected on the body, using a Jesus puzzle like kind of configuration. I use again cotton balls, feathers, all kinds of all kinds of feathers. It was directly painted on the wall. Well while I was there teaching at the school of uh, fine art in in, in San Juan, 
I found a piece of mahogany and was given to me by the school because I was teaching there and was transported to New York City. And out of that piece of mahogany, I had the piece of mahogany for 10 years after that. And one day I woke up after going to a trip to Turkey, Istanbul, Turkey, and I went to the aqueduct of that city. And within the aqueduct, I saw a figure of a medusa upside down in the water, in the pool of water. It was the aqueduct. And in the water was this upside down medusa. So I decided to do, when I came back to New York, I decided to use the piece of mahogany, Puerto Rican mahogany, to do this medusa. And the reason why is like that is just, I don't want you to see his hair face. You may turn into stone if you are not careful. So I leave it like that. It's not finished. The piece is not finished because although the central piece is finished, I had to create an environment for that piece. And I haven't created the environment. So I, I need an environment with mirrors. And I have to put the sculpture in there. And the sculpture will go into a turntable. Uh, so you cannot see that, uh, the figure directly. You, won't can, you, you only will be able to see the figure through a mirror. And that's the concept I'm working with. The piece is about three feet high. It weighs 75 pounds. This is the smallest sculpture I had done, 2014. It's on this window somehow. Yeah. The unicorn. Again, remember that I incorporate minimalism with figurative abstraction sometimes. So this is a result of this. Also, it's kind of geometrical also, because uh, my early work, work, I did a lot of geometry in my work. You can see it also in the paintings I created uh, in Venice, uh, the, the, uh, the tarot figures that I did. Again, I'm using that etching, creating, again, reviving the etching, the concept of the etching of the horoscope to create the oracle of the past, present, and future at Pumpkin Square Park. And it's like a solar, solar dial, a solar clock, a solar dial. Uh, through, through the day, you can see different shadows on the, on the on the ground, it changes to the passing of time. People enjoy it, they go there, they visit the oracle. The dome of the oracle, that is, again, this, the drawing, etching, sculpture. So I use the same thing, transforming it throughout time. Between this piece, and that piece, that was uh, 1993. This one is 2015. So it's evolved, it's evolving. Different zodiac signs, planets. You see marbles. You see the shadows cast on the ground at different times of the day, different angles. Uh, astronomical geometry. the dome, and here I am working, again. working again, and that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> any questions, any comments?